Next up, we have Andrew Bastin, the CTO of Hopscotch, where they are building an open source API development ecosystem. Hopscotch is one of the most popular open source projects on GitHub with over 55K stars. So uh, good morning to everyone. Um, I hope everyone is basically settling in for the India First stuff. It's a long ride ahead. And um, today I am here uh, to talk about what's new with Hopscotch. All right. For those of uh, who you don't know me and you know the uh, anchors who are trying to kind of buy time with the technical things, mm, good job, by the way. OK. Um, I am Andrew, and I am the co-founder and CTO at Hopscotch. So yeah. And what we do at Hopscotch is, rather than being confused by, for being a kids, uh, kids wear shop, we build our vision for the future of API development. Right? And this is our Mary team. Um, our team has actually kind of expanded a little bit. Uh, this is a very old photo. Uh, we had a team dinner yesterday, but some of them couldn't make it, so we couldn't take a photo. And um, yeah, this is our team. And we are Hopscotch, we are very proud members of the FOSS community, and um, we are really involved in the FOSS activities as well, and we kind of owe our project to it. This is our second year at India FOSS. Uh, last year, I basically gave somewhat of the same talk, but more on the line of what our values and vision is, the Hopscotch manifesto. And today, we are going to kind of have a continuation to it. That's what this talk is. It's a continuation, right? So because this is a continuation, what changed since last year? So what happened in Hopscotch basically over the span of the previous talk to this? Well, majorly, we crossed 50,000 stars earlier this year. It is a major achievement for us. Uh, funnily enough, I was in Bangalore that time. I was working with the team. That day morning, we basically uh, spun up like a star counter. We kind of coded it and just put my iPad on top of the board just to kind of see the updates live. Uh, but we have still, this is, this is on February, and we have grown so much further from this that 50K is now an old news. Uh, we just earlier this month, uh, we crossed 55K stars, and we are continuing the trajectory, all right? All right, and another random thing which happened was for the Lambda Test Test MuCon, we got awarded the best open source project in testing for 2023. Um, so that was another major event for us as well. Okay. <laughs> yeah, that was my reaction as well. I don't know what to kind of say about it. We have been going in and out of GitHub trending page so much that we just stopped taking track of it. It's just, it just keeps on happening. Uh, we were on trending even earlier this month when all of the API development fiasco was happening. Uh, it's a continuous thing, and we have been kind of going through that. And uh, along with that, uh, we um, launched some products. And one of the main thing is Hopscotch self-hosted. We launched in August. We have crossed 150K Docker pools for our containers, basically. And this is just for one container. Cumulatively, it should be more. Uh, since the launch in August. So it's only been a couple of months, and we have, we have been seeing really huge adoption. And another major thing, which not a lot of people I see have kind of like understood, is say, on April, we kind of announced that we are moving uh, towards uh, calendar-based versioning. So what this means is at Hopscotch, we are now going to continue, we are going to deliver um, one major update every four months. And we basically version according to that. So currently, the version is 2023.8. 2023.4 uh, was the initial one. 2023.8 released on August. And we'll be having one more this year for 2023.12, which will be released on December. All right? So that's one thing. Along with that, our existing products have been uh, growing like crazy. Uh, Hopscotch for Teams. Uh, the, the code for it has been fully open sourced over the year, and it has been growing crazy. We don't have the numbers on self-hosted because we don't track self-hosted instances. Uh, but for our personal, uh, for our Hopscotch.io cloud instance, we have more than tripled um, how, how many collections are created. Again, uh, more than tripled how many requests are stored within Teams. 
And again, more than triple how many teams are there registered in our platform. So this is 15,000 teams globally using Hopscotch for the collaboration. So it's been a crazy year ahead, a crazy year indeed. And it was not just for us, but also for everyone else in the space, right? The uh, API development testing space has never had this much competition. I mean, we are not the only API testing tool here. So that's something new. But it's been fun, and our engineering team has been basically taking it as a challenge. But this is, this is what has been happening in the world API testing space. People are disgusted with the direction Postman is going. That's generally the gist. Um, Insomnia, who was a crowd favorite, is also kind of going back on their things. And what is Hopscotch's response to all of these things? We have been interestingly been silent. Uh, we, ha we have had general messages basically floating around, but we haven't had a vocal response to it. And the reason for it was we at Hopscotch have been doing whatever we have been doing from the beginning, right? We, we, we were one of the first people in the space to basically say there needs to be a shakeup here, what, what needs to be done. And now there are people following our suit, but we have been doing and we have been leading this fight from the beginning. And even there, we have been sticking to our values to include everyone in terms of being able to use the app, in terms of making decisions, in terms of actually features, what you're trying to do, so that beginners, individuals, companies, contributors, everyone can actually gain from the project alike, be integrated, which is to build a suite of tools which magically work through across. For us, it is the ecosystem and the connected, connectedness of the different tools within our portfolio that is very important. And do all of this in a way that respects the open source heart open source and share whatever we can and, sh uh, and contribute what we take. This is an important thing our team kind of follows. And um, getting into the things, I want to kind of stop rambling on to what happened before. Now we are actually wa wanting to look ahead. We are also evolving as an organization. So this is one of the things we are going to be doing in response. So starting with today, we are unveiling a new era for Hopscotch. With the first order of business being identity. The Hopscotch logo has been a cornerstone for this. It's been with us from the beginning. Um, basically, I think from that first month itself, the logo was decided, and we basically still went ahead with it. And this has, this has been the era of the beginnings, right? But now, Hopscotch is an organization with a huge following, portfolio of projects, and things to kind of look after. And we want the project to kind of evolve to that maturity. So we are uh, unveiling our updated logo. Um, yep, uh, the updated logo. And this is just the beginning of the things. Along with that, um, we have also revamped, uh, we are also properly fully announcing, we had a soft launch, but we are now properly announcing hopscotch.com, which you can visit to learn more about Hopscotch and try. It's a beautifully amazing website, which we took a lot of time to kind of craft, but I think it looks really good now. And that is it for Hopscotch this year. Yes, we are only announcing a logo. Almost forgot. We have one more thing. <laughs> Just pulling my inner Steve Jobs, I didn't think it worked out really well, but we'll see. So in the beginning of the project, uh, most of our founding ideas is based on this post Lias made. Lias is here. You can say hi if, where is Lias? Oh, they're there. Uh, you can say hi to him after the, conference, uh, after the talk. And this was the idea. When he first joined his initial workplace, he came across Postman, and his old machine couldn't run it. And he came up with an alternative who he kind of radically called postwoman. That has bit us in the back at times. But um, he, created, he started with that, and that's how the project started, and that's how Hopscotch is there. So the problem is whatever direction we go in terms of how the project is built, um, it's, uh, the electron situation is something we can't kind of go through. 
so we decided to double, so on that side, on the technical aspects, we decided to double down on the web aspect of things because web was really capable. And for us, it has served really well. And because we are web focused, we, have, we were able to kind of focus on a couple more unique things that only Postman in the industry, so sorry, Hopscotch in the industry can do. My bad. Um, and, but at the same time, it's like people, people don't exactly understand this aspect. And people basically still ask us, where is our desktop app? Right? The problem we had always faced was, how can we do something which is against our founding ideas? Right? How can we do this? On the uh, and on the other side, browsers are also a pain to work with with the complex features. Uh, Hopscotch is getting really mature, and browsers are starting to becoming something. It's not enabling us, it's actually moving us now. So I did a bit of CTOing. This is usually how I explain things to my team when I come up with something crazy. So, but we are here now. We are introducing the Hopscotch desktop app. It's a desktop app with no compromise to our values. Basically, it should be the app that Leas at 2019 could have used. So it keeps to our values. So it's fast, because that's one of our values. How fast? As Lightning McQueen used to say, I am speed. And we have the numbers to back it. So on Thursday, we ran a benchmark. And we double checked these numbers, by the way, because we couldn't even believe it ourselves. So uh, this is the way in the bottom I have defined how we have run the benchmark. You guys can produce it once the app is out. Yeah, so we double checked it. So it's so performant that we had a team gathering to test slow performance. We had to run this in a Raspberry Pi. And even then it worked, right? And this is all between, we haven't even started a dedicated optimization sprint for it. This is just the initial release. We have, on, we have so much space for actually cutting down and actually uh, increasing performance. And it's visible how snappy it is. And this is something we have seen seriously. So here's a screen recording. Um, so here is Postman running. And that's it. And here is Insomnia running. And Insomnia sort of cheats by not loading the request editor initially. So this is a much more lightweight view. And this is Hopscotch. It's there. For the matter of fact, by, this, by the time I ran it second, second time, Postman still hadn't booted yet. And this is a file size comparison. It's an app that sends HTTP requests. Why should it be more than even 100, more than 100 MB is still not, uh, still not understandable. So then when we researched about this, we saw that there is a thing called Postman Agent, which is basically Postman has a web version now, and they have like a UI-less thing. Even that thing is 100 MB. So because we were trying to bring the features of that into Hopscotch, and we were like, should we have to ship it as a separate app? But it's like our a full app is basically smaller than that agent. So we are launching it as a public alpha. So this has only been tested in a couple of devices, and we want to kind of test it more. Uh, we actually found a couple of bugs, and we are working through it. So it'll be available next week with the Hopscotch 2023.8.3 release, which should happen sometime next week. And it'll be open source. So in Hopscotch slash Hopscotch, you'll be able to kind of find it. The code is already there, but in a separate branch right now. And in proper open source and for spirit, all of our findings and all of the, we have built some custom things with, uh, for building the desktop app. We'll be publishing those libraries and, and we'll be contributing our changes into the upstream projects that have helped us. We are already in conversations for this. We are working towards that. And this is a really important thing for us as part of our open source heart. And this is just beginning of the Hopscotch desktop app journey. Many more features are now possible with the newfound capabilities. We have just begun. So with the initial release, we'll have support for cookies. This is something we have been pain painfully working towards through. 
And now we are finally here. Um, it's all working. You can experience it. And yes, this has been a hot topic. Yes, Hopscotch is going to join this, uh, join this as well. We are going to support local, which, which is Git. It's Git friendly. It's not like how Postman or Insomniac does it. You can commit it. It's all proper file structure. This is how it's going to look like. Get it in. Uh, if you don't want to use Hopscotch Cloud or self hosted capabilities, you want to do it locally and collaborate as a local project, you can totally do that. Commit it to Git, do whatever, and Hopscotch is there to help you on any part of the thing. And there's many more in the pipeline. This is just the beginning, right? We can't wait uh, to have more announcements going, but as time allows, I'm already exceeding time here. Uh, as time allows, we are basically going to just wind up in that. So it's been a crazy year, but it's a much more crazy year ahead for Hopscotch. Oh, sorry. And that's about it. Come experience the desktop app. We have the desktop app at the Hopscotch Experience Labs. Come experience it and feel, uh, feel for it yourselves. Come talk to us. If you have anything which you, which you want to kind of talk with us, we can kind of do that and just experience it. Thank you. Also, um, just a moment, um, I dedicate this talk to Abraham Raji. We heard about him basically uh, in the today's opening note. Uh, Abraham has been a dear friend of mine as well, and we are all devastated for his loss. This is also for me, this is a very deep thing for me to talk. First is, this is my first talk after his passing. And ever since I met him, I usually give a copy of my slides to him to kind of verify. And today, actually today morning when I was like going to, I was sitting through the slides, it kind of hurt, it hit me. He's not, not there with me. But... Um, he is a person I kind of really aspire to be like. Thank you, that's it.